Good afternoon. Um, sorry, I will not speak in German because I have no clue. And uh, sorry because English is not my, my language as well, so uh, I'm sorry in advance for my mistakes. And I will read very slowly to make me myself clear. So um, the title of my presentation is The Voice of the Visitor, Some Considerations About Our Work. And when I'm talking about our work, I'm talking about museum educators' work. So I think it's in here. Um, I would like to thank, thank the organization and my dear Peter Schuller uh, for the invitation and also for uh, his constant work with SECA ICON. And I would also like to uh, congratulate this museum for the courage to talk about this particular topic. The question slash provoking, provocation of this meeting, whose museum is it, is nothing new. Yet, it's far from being answered. It's a difficult question to face, but absolutely necessary, especially in these troubled and technologically advanced times we live in. It can be answered from different points of view, and from each new perspective, the answers are different. For example, I'm an institutionalized people, so the museum in which I work right now Pinacoteca de São Paulo in Brazil, can be seen externally as a state museum. And this in itself can mean, among other things, that the building and the collection belong to the state of São Paulo, which consequently means it is official. This can be interpreted as something more than being representative, being authoritarian, and it then dictates this, how official art is. That the building and the collection belongs to the state, and for that reason, it is a public space where any citizen can enter and which any citizen can enjoy. But also, that even though the building and the collection belong to the state, it is managed privately and that makes possible blending the private interests from companies and patrons within the precepts of art officiality, as well as authorization for everyone to enter the building. And also that the building and the collection belongs to state, but because it is a museum, there can be ingrained idea that inside the building lay old things and things that don't relate to the general interest of the population. This in turn makes the museum just another vaguely known official institution. All these interpretations can be correct depending on the point of view and all of them live side by side in society. But distinct perceptions within answers also live and not in a pacific matter in the internal field of the museums. <coughs> there are two large matrices of the museum chain or operation have a daily tug of war. Once, uh, on one side, the curators, historians, critics, artists, and conservators, that is, in the people who play the traditional roles within the art system, see the museum in a more traditional manner. They see it as a laudatory art institution, which should serve society's learning of art history. These people, therefore, acting in a way of a discursive construction whose interest would be restricted to specialists, students of this area, and just vaguely 
of people who share an interest with the topic. Normally, this tendency favors the objects of the museum to its audiences. From this field, the, major, the majority of um, museum directors came. On the other side, the educators and communicators who preach distinctive values, thinking and acting inside the museum while keeping in mind the general public, society's big ideas, society, and individuals from museum surroundings, thinking about the museum as a forum-like space, open to all, with the intent of discussing not art and his history, but on the contrary, discussing through art about the individual, the humanity, its stories, and possible relationships. Ultimately, discussing life itself. This axis of thought normally privileges the public more than the objects. This difference in perspective has promoted broad disputes and has been configured in a formal manner since 1970s to new museology. Not for nothing, this line of thought is founded upon a letter of recommendation to UNESCO released in Santiago, Chile having many museologists and Latin American museum professionals as a protagonists at the time when, under dictatorships and authoritarian government, they would ask for what purpose and for whom the museum existed. From my point of view, after recent world events, was cited so many times during this meeting, these proposals make more sense and sound more urgent than Never. And although we need a less, of a less elitist, authoritarian, and official posture, as in opposing of popular, seems obvious on the part of the museum, many professionals still ask themselves if the museum must really have to engage into a relationship with the population and fight for a fairer society. It's not a, a very solved question. Uh, thus, before presenting some examples and ways of dealing with this issue around the world, I leave you with uh, the contemplation of Mark New, Director of Policy and Research for Glasgow Life in Scotland. He said, any organization that is not promoting, not working to break down barriers to access is actively maintaining them. Neutrality is not possible. The examples I bring from the mo more timid to the boldest, from different parts of the world, in order to contribute to the reflection of the museum's potation, potential in regard to building a fairer society listen to the visitors' voices, and promoting dialogue opportunities. The first one, multiple visions in technical labels. It's a very light and delicate example. Last year, Peter and I had the chance to visit some museums in Milan, Italy during Icon General Conference and the second meeting, which were both held there. A must-see is the Pinacoteca di Brera, which contains some of the most influential works of art in the world. The aforementioned are presented in several sequential galleries in very traditional matter through chronological order like this. Despite all that, the new director has slowly and delicately, considering that it's very hard to break the structures that have been kept rigid for a very long time, been implementing small changes, such as an addition which is apparently simple, but has a deep impact in the public. Some work of arts have been selected to receive at least two labels with a short text. One, with the comments made by experts in the museum, and another one composed by guests 
who are foreign in the art world, such as poets, writers, and scientists. Besides, some of them have received labels which were designed for families, in which there is an attempt to establish a dialogue with this audience. In a traditional and closed museum, uh, different from open museum, in a closed museum institution, this action is or could be revolutionary. Other perspectives. The second example is in the museum where I work, which is also a very traditional one. But with the support of the direction at the time, managed to make some progress in regard to more equitative proposals in relation to the audience. The first example is from 19, uh, 2019, when we made inside the sacred space of the Art Museum an exhibition documenting the educational process and results from graphic art workshops done with adult street dwellers. For this exhibition, we applied the same expographic quality of all other exhibitions in the museum. It was extremely important for us to realize how this exhibition brought people who are more vulnerable including people who work inside the museum itself, like the cleaning staff, closer to art and to the museum itself. Also in Pinacoteca, since 2011, we have uh, a program called Dialogues with Art, which shows modern and contemporary work of art displayed at the long-term exhibition of the museum's collection, composed especially of 19th century works in chronological and thematic order. For example, in the landscape done by traveling artists' room that shows painting like this, we included these two work of art that defy the concept of landscape, and in the text we call upon the audience to reflect on this team, especially through questions. This too is general views of the exhibition rooms with this dialogue with art project. Uh, the artwork was chosen uh, based on, on the questions that the public gave to us. Other example is the museum leaves the museum part one. How can museums reach individuals who are confined and have no right to social and cultural participation? Let's know, now visit one of the most traditional and visible French institutions, the Grand Palais. In 2012, starting from an informal contact with uh, the, the responsible of the Department of Visitors, um, he proposed a project where the museum would make an exhibition at the Royal Penitentiary, which would be created by the prisoners themselves. The original work of art and some reproductions were exhibited internally in the prison facilities, which through art and also through the exercise of participation gave the prisoners the possibility of exercising the right to keep in touch with culture and discover themselves as participants of a socially instituted culture. This is, an import this is important that this exhibition affects both the prisoners and the employees because a work of art is a window to the world. For a prisoner, it is an opening. If this allows him to work on himself and on society, that's better, say Vicente Pousseau, director of audiences for Grand Palais. At the same time, the prison facilities were open to the public, which demystifies both art and prison system. The Voyage, is that um, exhibition, was presented from September to November 2013 in the prison compound, welcoming more than 800 visitors, detained persons, prison staff, families of curators, in this case the prisoners, journalists, professionals of culture and justice. The museum leaves the museum part two, the revenge. 
how to bring contemporary art closer to the community? What if instead of community going to the museum, we go to them? Let's go back to Americas with an experiment which is already in his fifth edition at the MUAC. The project uh, called MUAC at Home and is promoted by MUAC, Museu Universitario de Arte Contemporânea, part of the campus of National Autonomous University of Mexico, the UNAM. This project selects teenagers and youngsters for technical schools, high schools, in the peripheral, peripheral areas of the city so that they can perform the tasks of the museum professionals, conservation, restoration, curatorship, espography, security, education, etc. While at the same time fostering conversation with artists who produced works of art that are in the museum collection. The idea is that after they graduate in this school, these young people receive at home of one of the group members an original work of art belonging to the museum collection for a stay of about seven weeks. During this time, the group of youngsters should promote security, visitation, debates, <coughs> educational visits, and more. To participate, the group should apply filling out a form where they answer the following questions. If you had a contemporary work of art at home, what do you do so that your family, friends, neighbors, and community participate in this event? How important is it to have a contemporary work of art that is accessible to your family, friends, neighbors, and community? And finally, museum and life, museum is life. It is possible to interwine museum and life itself. Although it's not an art museum per se, and we might have to come up with a different name for this experience, I would like to share with this project from Colombia, the itinerant museum of memory. The region of Montes de Maria was for over 10 years a target for the guerrilla opening between the official institutions and the armed militia who were fighting over territory, power, and drugs. These clashes made entire populations move and broke families apart through violence. This museum does not have an address. It's only an idea and a tent shaped like a mochuelo, that is a bird uh, for display, this region, which from time to time lands in a city, in this area, and calls people to participate by retelling their stories and memories, filling the museums with objects, words, and art stories. By placing value in the memories and stories representing people's life, which are made concrete by different ways, the goal is to promote a symbolic reparation to the violence these people went through and saw. The objects in the museum are produced by the visitors themselves. Through it, they can recognize themselves they tell, uh, tell their stories again, giving them new meanings and rebirth. I hope these examples had contributed in a way that we can answer in the future in unison to the question that serves as the title of this meeting with a single sentence, the museum belongs to all. Thank you very much.